السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters we know that all of us need protection the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the owner of protection if Allah has not protected someone they are doomed and if Allah has protected someone, then nothing can ever harm them. So the Prophet ﷺ has clearly told us that we need to seek the protection of Allah. In fact, Allah Almighty Himself has revealed surahs, entire surahs of the Qur'an, wherein He is asking not only Rasulullah ﷺ, but by extension, every one of us, to seek the protection of Allah. You and I know that Muhammad ibn Abdullah al Hashimi al Qurashi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of creation, the most loved by Allah, the most noble of all messengers of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon them all. We know that he was protected by Allah completely. He didn't need to seek the protection of Allah. But Allah still tells him that we will let certain things happen in your life only so that your followers, your ummah can actually take cue from what has happened and protect themselves and continue to seek the protection of Allah on a daily basis, not just in the morning, but in the morning and the evening. May Allah protect all of us. Say, Ameen. My brothers and sisters, there was a time when someone had blown into the knots that they had made of the blessed hair of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on a comb, trying to engage in what is known as magic against the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remember, nothing harms you except by the will, permission and knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So nothing can ever happen to you except if Allah has willed it, if Allah has written it, and if Allah knows about it, and He will know about it. So the Prophet ﷺ, one might ask, why did Allah allow this to happen to him when he was the most loved unto Allah? Well, We always hear that there is a beautiful example in the Prophet ﷺ, if you were to follow him, and him wholly and him alone, you would need nothing else. So, if we were to follow the Prophet Wasallam's sunnah and his way, every morning and evening, we would be seeking the protection of Allah from the evil that is around us. What type of evil? Evil people, evil thoughts, the whispers of shaitan, whether it is magic that people try, jealousy that people might have, some the evil eye that is mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sometimes you can actually affect your own self with evil eye. When is it? When you are so self-conceited and impressed by yourself that you forget Allah. You forget to connect it to Allah. You have wealth, connect it to Allah. You have good looks, connect that to Allah. You have a happy situation, connect it to Allah. By saying what? By believing this is only from Allah, He can take it away now. This is only from Allah. Whatever Allah has willed has happened. Ma sha Allahu, tabarakallah. Tabarakallah. Glory be to Allah. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us from His goodness. My beloved brothers and sisters, Today, I wish to go through 11 verses of the Quran, very short, but very powerful, connected to the protection and the seeking of protection from Allah. Who is Allah? And what exactly are we seeking protection from? So the Prophet ﷺ was shown in his dream. He was, it was actually revealed to him in a certain way what happened to him and where it was done. He sent one of his companions to go and look for that comb. And lo and behold, there were 11 knots. As he released each one of the knots, he recited each verse that was being revealed. Subhanallah. Do you know how powerful that is? 
Allah is telling Rasulullah sallallahu and by extension all of us say, I seek the protection in the Lord of the daybreak. Whoever created daybreak, I ask him to protect me. Subhanallah, look how powerful that is. Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falak. Say that I seek the protection in the Lord of daybreak, the one who made the daybreak and who allows it to continue to come on a daily basis. So much so that did you realize daybreak is a creation of Allah that never ever disobeys Allah. Such that other creatures of Allah can give you the precise nanosecond that this sun is going to come up. You and I know we have a perpetual calendar here in this masjid that will tell you sunrise this time. Does daybreak ever say today I'm not coming? Subhanallah. May Allah grant us ease. We learn what obedience is when we look at the other creatures of Allah. But man with his sophisticated brain still thinks it's okay. Today I'll have a break. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So we are seeking the protection in Allah. Who is Allah, the Lord of the daybreak? From what do I want protection from? From the evil of that which he created. So he created good things. But within those good things, there can be evil that will come from those good things. For example, you have a human being. Allah created mankind for various reasons. That's a topic on its own. But within mankind, sometimes evil can come out of them. Allah created the darkness. In the darkness sometimes, and the darkness is not a bad thing. Within darkness, we actually have a very blessed moment where we would fulfill a prayer that is so valuable known as tahajjud. Had it not been for that time of the night or that time of the morning, whatever you want to call it, based on how you look at it, you would not be able to achieve that closeness to Allah. And remember something that I find very, very amazing and a sign of the mercy of Allah is he did not make the prayer of tahajjud compulsory. If he made it compulsory, it might have been difficult on us. Imagine you go to sleep, you get up at a certain time, just when you're getting a good sleep. Allah says, we will keep it voluntary, but we will recommend it and we will show you the value of it. And you know what? You get to a level when you decide, I'm going to fulfill this for the sake of Allah. It's darkness, right? Outside. But the most enlightening ibadah is happening at the darkest hour. So it doesn't mean all of what Allah has created within the darkness is evil. Allah created the day and the night. Those are good things. But within the night, a lot of evil happens. So what do we say? We say, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقُ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقُ وَمِنْ شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبَ And I seek His protection. I seek the protection of the one who created the daybreak from the darkness when it sets in. غاسق The darkness when it sets in. As the darkness settles, people feel insecure. Sometimes, subhanallah, the lighting is not good enough. At times you know that you hear sounds and you feel a little bit uneasy. You are supposed to be a mu'min, a believer. The minute you seek the protection of Allah, there should be a comfort within your heart. I have read my dua. It's called mu'awwidat. Mu'awwidat, those verses were in which you are seeking the protection of Allah. Ayatul Kursi is one of the most powerful. But today we are speaking of the last two surahs of the Quran known as al Mu'awwidatan, The two surahs within which you seek the protection of Allah from all evil. So we are saying, Oh Allah, I seek your protection from the darkness as it settles. Min sharri ghasiqin idha waqab. وَمِن شَرِّ النَّفَّاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ And we are seeking the protection of the Lord of Daybreak from the blowing. The blowing that happens upon the knots wherein people are intending to engage in magic. What does this mean? Number one, the evil of magic. Number two, the tying of knots. And the blowing in those knots is a type of magic. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Man sahara faqad ashrak. Whoever engages in that has disassociated from Allah or associated partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To engage in magic is haram, totally haram. How to protect myself from the evil of magic is by reading this surah 
every morning, every evening. Not just once, repeat it thrice with Ayatul Kursi. And you will be protected. Allah is telling you, you are saying, Oh Allah, protect me from the evil of the blowing into the knots of the one who is going to blow into it. Min sharri an nafathati fil uqad. The evil that will come out of it, protect me from it. Oh Allah, I seek your protection from the jealousy of the one who is jealous. May Allah protect us. If we are seeking protection of the Lord of daybreak from jealousy, it means we should not be jealous of others because it's an evil thing. I want protection from jealousy, but I'm jealous of everybody else. What's the point? Subhanallah. You want protection? Don't be. Be happy when you see someone achieving something that's a sign of your connection with Allah. Someone has scaled great heights in wealth, in position, in power, in authority, in knowledge, in anything. The day you are happy for them is the day you are happy with Allah. Do you know why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Nahnu qasamna bainahum. We are the ones who distributed all this to the people, not you. So if you're happy with what they got, you're happy with what we actually gave them. Subhanallah. You see, when you are not happy with what Allah gave someone else, you're not happy with Allah. When you are happy with what Allah gave someone, in actual fact, you've only now understood who is Allah. He's the giver. May Allah protect us from jealousy. And may Allah protect us from it both ways. From being affected by jealousy and from affecting others with jealousy. Let's move to the next surah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas. Another powerful opening. You are declaring that I am seeking the protection in the Lord of the people. Who is the Lord of the people? Allah. So you are confirming that the Lord of the people is actually Allah. And whoever that is, we know that it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creator of entire creation. But the one who created mankind at large, we seek his protection from what? Every evil that comes from man and jinn. That's what it is. Before we continue to say what we want protection from, we want to declare and acknowledge who is Allah. Malikin Nas, he is the owner of all the people, the sovereign, the owner. He owns all the people. You, your father, your children, your siblings, and everybody you know, your enemies and your friends, they are ownership of Allah who made them. That's why when a person passes away, what's the dua we normally say? As soon as you hear so and so passed away, what do we say? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. What does that mean? We belong to Allah. He owns us. And we're all going to go back to Him. Subhanallah. Confirmation. Malikin Nas. He is the owner of all the people. I seek the protection in the Rabb of the people who is the owner of all the people, who is the worshipped by all the people, the owner of worship. He is the only one who deserves to be worshipped. There are so many other things that people worship nowadays. None of them deserve worship. That's why when we translate La ilaha illallah, we say there is no God worthy of worship besides Allah. There are others who are being worshipped. They are not worthy of worship. Allah is the only one worthy of worship. That's it. So this is why we say that the one who is worthy of worship, Ilahin Nas. Now I go ahead and I say what I want protection from. First, we talk about shaitan. Shaitan is evil. Man is good. All the people you get along with, those you don't get along with. The good and the bad people, literally, within them there is goodness. But shaitan exploits and shaitan abuses. And shaitan traps and they fall into the trap and they then extend the work of shaitan with or without realizing. Now we need protection from that because without realizing we could be people who are falling in the trap of shaitan and shaitan, shaitan tries with everyone every day. So the day you think today shaitan didn't come to me, you need to go to someone with knowledge and ask them and find out, you know what, how did shaitan come to me today? He came to you. If you don't know how, then you need a little bit of help. He came to you somehow. Every day, shaitan comes to everyone. That's why we say, seek the protection in Allah from shaitan. So who is this waswasil khannas? He is the whisperer who retreats. 
whispers in your system. He comes and quickly tell you, your sister-in-law is against you. Oh, and then he runs away. Now you start with your mind. Your mind becomes strong. Sorry to give this example. I know it's quite a common thing. But in all honesty, it's from shaitan. So what happens? You start thinking, your mind, then you start working and you start doing more than shaitan expected. Some of us, we make shaitan ashamed because he didn't know how properly we would actually follow what he planned and even execute it in a better way sometimes. It happens. So relax, take it easy. Understand, process the whispers in a proper way that will please Allah. What does shaitan do? Allah says, Shaitan comes to you, lights the fire and runs away. It's in the Quran. Allah tells you that in Surah Al-Hash. كَمَثَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِذْ قَالَ لِلْإِنسَانِ كفر فَلَمَّا كَفَرْ قَالَ إِنِّي بَرِيءٌ مِّنْكَ Subhanallah. Shaitan comes and says, I want you to disbelieve. Obviously not directly like this, but in certain ways. Once you disbelieve, and then when he is being blamed, he says, no, 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 I got nothing to do with this. I was never involved here. Don't put me into this thing here. But you started the whole thing. That is what is called waswas al khannas. The whisperer who retreats, he runs away. In fact, there is a there is jinn kind from among shayateen who are named al khannas because they create doubt in the mind, whether it's OCD, whether it is uh, the problems that people face with thoughts and with you know, evil thoughts, bad thoughts. That is Al-Khannas affecting you. Ask Allah to protect you from the whispering of Al-Khannas. Because he comes to you, then he goes away. Then he comes to you again, then he goes away. Then he comes to you again, then he goes away a third time. And so on. Min sharril waswas al-Khannas. What is exactly those whisperings? How do they work? So we describe it, or Allah describes it. Alladhi waswis fi sudurin nas. That which actually whispers within the hearts of the people. Not only in your ears. Shaitan comes to your system, in your heart. You start hating others. You start causing problems. You start doing things that displease Allah. And you don't realize, man, who are you? You were a droplet of semen and you are going to be literally returning to the soil and dust. That's what you are. That's what I am. Droplet of semen. Today we want to argue and fight and pretend like we are the ones and there's no one besides us. There is everyone besides you. Subhanallah. You are just one. There are people who are closer to Allah than you, whom you think are far from Allah, but you don't know because taqwa is only known by Allah. That's why he's got a day of judgment. If it was known by all of us, we wouldn't need the day of judgment. We would already know, muttaqi, 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 let's go. These guys are sinners, 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 let's go. That's not how it works. May Allah grant us steadfastness. And steadfastness is a journey that lasts right up to the last breath. Some people quit right at the end and some people jump on right at the end. May Allah grant us death with Iman. So this is why we are taught right at the end. From jinn kind, from mankind. You know the devils are two types, not only jinn kind. Sometimes your friend is a shaitan. Sometimes you and I can become little shayateen. When? When we encourage others to disobey Allah and we are disobeying Allah. When we create fitna and we are the source of it. Who are we? We are, we are not, like I said, they say in Ramadan shayateen are tied. But the shayateen of mankind are not tied. So I always tell people that means now it's you and I. Forget about the shaitan. He's tied. Now we are the devils. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness. May Allah open our doors. I want to close by saying my brothers and sisters, don't ever lower your guard. You know, if you go to a war zone and you've got that protective, uh, uh, what's it called? The, the bulletproof vest and so on. You know, we are here in Newtown, Johannesburg. If I were to ask you to lift up your hands, anyone who has that vest, we're going to get a few guys here. But let's not do that. All I'm going to tell you is we would be fools if we know that there's shaitans and jinn kind all around us trying to attack us. And we don't read simple du'as every morning and evening and after every salah. So that is my lesson to myself to begin with and yours. Don't be lazy. Every morning and evening, Remember, it is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Fulfill these verses. Read them. Believe them. Seek the protection of Allah. Wallahi, bismillahi alladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un fil ard wala fis sama wa huwa al-sami'ul alim. In the name of Allah, 
with whose name nothing in the heavens or the earth, meaning in the skies or the earth, can ever harm. He is indeed the all-hearing, all-wise. Nothing will touch you unless and until Allah has willed it. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.